Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Let's Create Game Mechanics in the Unreal Engine. In this video, I recreate the remote bomb from the Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is the fifth in the series of Zelda mechanics as I work my way back through all of the runes from the Breath of the Wild game. To recreate this mechanic, I needed to create and implement the base classes for the different types of bombs, which you can spawn and use inside of the Breath of the Wild. I then needed to take a slightly deeper look at some of the physics options and settings inside of the Unreal Engine to better replicate the feel of using them inside of Zelda. And finally, I added some of the visual effects, including particles and some camera shake for that juicy game feel. So the remote bombs inside of the Breath of the Wild game are used as a puzzle mechanic and it allows you to bypass things such as damaged walls and rocks. So to start the remote bomb implementation, I created the base classes for the bombs, a new rune component to add to the player class, and knowing that there were two different types of bombs that would need to be accounted for, I chose to create an enumerator class to account for this later when choosing which to spawn based on the player's choice. I also chose and implemented some placeholder assets from the default engines folder in Unreal so that I could get an idea of the scaling and the physics of the object when spawning them. With the class set up and ready to go, I started implementing the logic for the new mechanic by once again activating the button in the rune selection menu. In the player class, I've added a scene component above the character's head, and this is to act as a spawn location of the bomb, and this will be referenced and used inside of the remote bomb component class when the option is selected from the menu. So of course, everything here works straight away, at least it would have done. If I'd paid attention to the enum setup, and set the buttons to spawn the correct type of remote bomb. But with that small oversight fixed, things are looking a little bit better, but it's clear here that we need to stop the bomb from immediately falling to the ground. So to imitate Link holding an object in the Breath of the Wild, I started by setting Enable Simulate Physics to False by default in the Base Bomb class, and this stops the spawned actor from falling straight to the ground. However, this now allows you to run off, leaving the object floating in the air, which is easily fixed by attaching the new actor to the player class so that it inherits any future movement and rotation relative to the scene component that I mentioned earlier. So as it is, the bombs now float kind of terrifyingly above the player's head forever. To implement the throwing of the bomb, I've simply taken the direction the player is facing and checked if we have a valid reference to a spawned bomb. If so, then a force is applied in the forward direction to the bomb object based on a variable amount passed in. To begin with, the physics and continued velocity of the bomb at this stage felt a little bit too light, so I tweaked some of the linear velocity values under the physics options and had them feeling a little bit more weighty and much more like the game. The final thing to add to complete the basic implementation was getting the bomb to detonate, and I borrowed a previously assigned input action, which is the push action, or the mouse wheel up and this is used as a detonate trigger if a valid bomb is detected. At this point, the detonation simply triggers a function that destroys the actor and clears a reference to itself to ensure that another remote bomb can be spawned. Now, another problem presents itself here, which is very similar to some of the previous mechanics, which is when we're swapping between runes, if you have a bomb spawned and switch to another rune, the reference to the current bomb is removed, but it's left in the level, meaning that it can never be destroyed. So to solve this one, I've implemented an auto drop feature. This will initiate a countdown timer to automatically call the detonate function. And this ensures that there'll only ever be one remote bomb in the level at any given time. With all of the mechanics implemented, the final step was to add the polish to really feel the impact of the detonations. I started with the more visual aspects by creating some simple particle effects. At the first of which is the small ring of energy, just to add a spawning effect when you first create the bomb, and the second was the main explosion particle when the remote bomb is detonated. I also felt that the placeholder arts didn't really fit the mechanics, whereas with the other rune powers they still looked fine using some simple geometry. I went back this time around and created some basic models inside of Blender to more accurately recreate the area in which you have an emissive glow on the bombs. So the final thing to make this look and feel like it has a lot of power behind it is to add the all-important camera shake. For this I wanted to make the camera shake system fairly flexible so I've created a camera shake class and I've called this in the detonation function inside of the bomb. 
I've also used some draw debug shapes so that you can get the idea of the scale of which the impact is going to be at the highest, so the center of the bomb explosion, and where the kind of fall off zone is. And this helped to really get a good idea of how far away the player could get before they didn't feel any impact from the bomb exploding if they detonate it really far away. Before completely wrapping up the project though, I couldn't help but feel that something was still missing and after some running around and playing about in the level I realised that although the explosions looked impactful uh, they didn't actually interact with anything else in the world. By attaching a force component to the bomb base class and triggering it to fire an impulse I was able to apply an impulse to surrounding physics actors. Because we have a lot of these already in the level I've used some draw debug shapes again for extra debugging here to see the, again, the range in which this impulse is going to be applied. And after some tweaking with these values and the force applied, we have the final results looking a lot more explosive and interesting to play around with. So that's it for the Zelda mechanics project. I've actually really enjoyed creating this final mechanic and especially the final steps of applying the physics impulses to nearby actors. This is just something I've always enjoyed in games that utilize what can be called emergent gameplay. It's actually one of the first things as well that I really loved and enjoyed about Breath of the Wild. And because I went into the game blind, I hadn't really seen any reviews. I didn't know much about the gameplay mechanics or the way that you interact with the world. Uh, and I remember this time when I accidentally shot a standard arrow through a Bokoblin campfire. That arrow happened to completely miss the target. It impaled itself in an explosive barrel behind the Bokoblin. Uh, that proceeded to explode and set off all of the other barrels around it as well and I pretty much took out the entire camp in a single hit due to the uh, massive stringed explosions. Again, because I genuinely didn't know this would happen going into it, that just felt pretty amazing um, and it's one of the things that I think Breath of the Wild does really well where everything metal is magnetic, everything wooden can be set on fire, things like that where it just feels a little bit more emergent, things can kind of happen by themselves and I love that in games. So it was definitely great to have the opportunity to add that into even a very small project like this. Now remember, of course, you can download the entire source of the project for free from the link in the description below. Just wanted to point out as well that in this one specifically, I always tidy up the code, but I have left the draw debug shapes in there. They're unhooked. So if you wanted to check any of the uh, debugging that I've done to get the scales of the radius of effect for the camera shake or the explosions, they're still there available for you to look at. Uh, I wanted to leave those in because from the beginning of this project I've really tried approaching it in a way uh, where it's going to be a learning resource for you to pull things apart. And initially it was to get across the use of components and hopefully you can see how dynamic components can be so that the player character doesn't know very much about what it's using. It just needs to call a function and see what happens. But also I think little things like debugging and how to use drawing objects to screen can be really useful too. The final thing to mention, of course, is that we do still have the camera mechanic left available in the selection screen. Now, I'm not going to cover that in a video because it's going to be very, very simple to implement. I think it's going to be a transition from a third person to a first person character and then using a console command to get a screen capture. So that probably won't be very interesting. What I'm going to do is I will implement that into the project when I get some spare time and I'll just include that with some comments about how to use it in the final package. So that won't be in this version perhaps, uh, check back in a few weeks for that implementation. Now of course as always if you do download and try the project out then let me know, leave a comment, let me know what you think and feel free to share any of your projects if you use any of the mechanics from the demo. So going forward I'm going to try and look at some more unique games. I probably won't do a uh, multiple mechanics from a single game again so I'm going to try and stick to one mechanic from a game that I find interesting and I've got a few ideas from indie games coming up. Now if you've got anything you want to see recreated though again do leave those suggestions in the comments below and I just wanted to say a big thank you to the Patreon supporters as your support towards the channel really helps me to create and spend some time developing these more in-depth mechanics based videos and if you wanted to support the channel but you're not able to over on patreon then do consider subscribing you'll get updates on all of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel and of course hit the notification bell to ensure that you actually get those updates as ever though thanks for watching and i will see you all next time